Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? So every year before the season starts, there's always the hot seat conversation. And full disclosure, I know before you even start, I know some of you are going to roll your eyes and say, Matt, we get it. You don't like Dennis Allen. You don't think he's a good coach. My, my feelings on this are well known. And it's not anything against Dennis Allen personally. Um, just as a, as a coach, Dennis Allen has never had success. Uh, during his tenure with the Raiders, he was 8-28. and 28. Last year, his first season in New Orleans, he was 7-10. and 10. That's the first losing record the Saints have had since 2016. First time the offense finished outside the top 20 in scoring since 2005, the year before Sean Payton showed up. So it is fair, it is completely fair to look at Dennis Allen with a critical eye because Dennis Allen, as a head coach, has never won. You can like Dennis Allen. You can like him as a defensive coordinator. You can hope he succeeds in New Orleans. You can even think that now that he has a quarterback and it's his system and all, you can think he'll succeed. That's fine. And he may. But it is totally fair to look at Dennis Allen with a critical eye. Okay? Now, um, number one on CBS's list of hot seat coaches was Ron Rivera. Number two is Dennis Allen. Their write-up on Dennis Allen is essentially saying the Saints went out and got Derek Carr, so they fixed their quarterback situation. They should benefit from having one of the easier schedules in the NFL. And they write, if the Saints don't make the playoffs, Allen won't be back in New Orleans. There's too much talent on the Saints for them to significantly underachieve in 2023. So, a, a couple of things here. Number one... They are setting the bar at the playoffs. If the Saints don't make the playoffs, Allen's got to be gone. That that may be the case. Um, they also say there's too much talent on the Saints for them to significantly underachieve. So I think you have to define what is significantly underachieve. We talked. We went through win totals yesterday. Normally, when you look at win totals, Vegas doesn't miss to the over; they miss to the under. Meaning last year the Vikings were four games to the over. Generally, when they miss it's missing teams to the under, meaning they're projecting teams to do better than they actually do. So the Saints would have to fall in that category. As a team projected at over under 9.5, meaning they're projecting 10-7, and 9-8, and eight, somewhere in there, if this is a team that goes 6-11, and 11, okay, you're, you're, we're having that tough conversation for sure. But I think that's got to be the bar right now is 7. Um, the bigger question for me is Saints ownership. Mrs. Benson, Dennis Lausha, Mickey Loomis, whoever is in on making that that decision, how much leeway are they willing to give Dennis Allen or any coach? Some franchises are notoriously patient, none more so than the Pittsburgh Steelers. They've had three coaches in like 50 years. They went from Chuck Noll to Billy to, to Bill Cower to Mike Tomlin. They've had three coaches in, in a half a century. The Ravens have been incredibly patient with John Harbaugh. Um, the Saints allowed Sean Payton back to back to back seven and nine seasons before they figured it out in the draft and got the ship righted and changed their culture and started winning again. And historically, the Saints have been somewhat of a more patient franchise. You don't see them running through coaches every year or two. Um, you know, and I look through the history of the Saints organization with their coaches, the shortest tenured coaches, Mike Ditka was a three-year tenured coach from 1997 to 1999, but the shortest tenure ever was Hank Stram from 1976 uh, he coached in 1976 and 1977. Now, he had some interims. Like, Rick Venturi was an interim in 1996. Um, Wade Phillips was an interim in 1985. Um, Ernie Hefferly was a coach for one season, or not even a full season, in 1975. He went 1-7. Uh, he replaced John North in the middle of that season. But so, so my point is, aside from Hank Stram, who coached for two seasons in 76 and 77, Ditka, Dick Nolan, J.D. Roberts, John North, all were just three years. 
other than that, you've had you've given coaches rope. I mean, so if if Dennis Allen were fired after this year, he would join only Hank Stram as a coach failing to make it past year two as a Saints head coach. So history with this organization is on Dennis Allen's side for longevity. And it's worth noting, of course, that when Tom Benson bought the team and they hired Jim Mora, Moore was here for a decade and then was Ditka for three years. Then they gave Jim Hazlitt six seasons. And then after Hurricane Katrina, of course, he was out. And then Sean Payton was the coach from 06 to 2021. He walked away before last season. We know, like, we know all that. So they have been more patient than other teams have been in this era of the NFL. Now, what I will say is this is the same ownership group that fired Stan Van Gundy after one season in New Orleans with the Pelicans. Now, I don't know if they're going to hold the Saints coach to a different standard than a Pelicans coach. I, I don't know that. But it is the same ownership group that looked at the situation with the Pelicans after one year with SVG and were like, this ain't working. Like, cut your losses, move on, because this ain't it. We'll see if they're there with Dennis Allen. But again, CBS says... If the Saints don't make the playoffs, Allen won't be back in New Orleans. Maybe that's the case. Maybe there's a surprise team in the NFC South this year that goes and wins 10 games and the Saints go 9-8 and eight and miss the playoffs, which could be plausible. I mean, that it, it could happen. But I really think that bar is 7. If you don't win at least 7 games this year, if you don't match what you did a year ago, minimum, then Dennis Allen's got to be gone because you did go fix your quarterback situation. You did give him more reign to do on his staff what he wanted to do. Some of the assistants who had been around are gone, and he's been able to bring in his own guy. Ryan Nielsen's in Atlanta now. So, yes, I, I do think that there needs to be a more critical eye on Dennis Allen this year because in the NFL, we all know the old axiom, what have you done for me lately? It's, it's, it's time. Like You got to win now in the NFL. So... Uh, Dennis Allen has never proven that he can do that as a head coach. There should be a, a heavier standard and burden on him this year to prove it because you cannot allow this thing to continue to spiral under Dennis Allen if if he's not the right guy. Said it often. Not every lieutenant was meant to be a general. I think we're going to find out this year with Dennis Allen. Is he ready to be a general? Can he be the guy? Or is he always going to be a really, really good number two? Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.